All right, well, I've been racking my brain standing here looking at this thing, trying to decide how I want to mount this hydraulic tank. Because I think this is my first good design flaw on this project. Now, this is nothing that's going to keep anything from running or anything like that. But I'm starting to regret kind of using the 6 inch steel pipe, but it is what I have. It was free, so I'm using it. Um, I'd rather have my fittings come off to the side, but even if I cut that half inch plate back, or back this way, it's still going to have my stuff right in the line of fire here. I really don't want that. So I think I'm going to still do... Get it balanced here. Any file shim under it. I think we're going to weld it on just like that. Now it's going to be kind of goofy, but I mean, shit, everything we do around here is kind of goofy, so why not one more thing? But, so the deal is, I'll bring my hoses kind of up and over. They're going to sweep out, but it's going to be on the back side. I'm going to have this thing away from the wall quite a bit anyway. Our suction port will be down here. Now what we're going to do up here for our return port, we're going to do kind of a dip tube that's going to go down a little bit below this sight glass here. And that way hopefully we should take care of any air bubble issues that we might have. And that's pretty... It's goofy, but it will work. So I guess we will get after it. Okay, so we discussed when we were making the, uh, building the tank itself, some of the things we were going to be doing in regards to how we were going to fit this thing up, and stuff of that nature. So, I had a drill catch the other night, hooked me right in the damn ribs right there, and I tell you what, she hooked me good. It does not feel the greatest. But whatever, what are you going to do? So, I'm trying to avoid 90s and a lot of this stuff. It's um, a lot more important from what I've been reading. And somebody correct me if I'm wrong with the hydraulics. It's a lot more important not to have the 90s. Avoid them coming out of the pump, things like that, as much as you can. And... So we're going to try that, but unfortunately I cannot totally avoid it. So what may end up happening, I may either have to upsize a couple things, I may lose a little bit of power, or it might be just fine. Um, 
these right here, the black iron valuable pipe can handle some pretty decent loads. This is only schedule 40, but it's only rated uh, with 600 pounds, I think, for continuous operating load. So we're only using this on the low pressure side of the system. So that's something to keep in mind. Now for the splitters that I need for the two rams, because we're gonna come out of the, uh, we have a mono block, two spool valve uh, detent coming for this. Again, it was supposed to be here today. Again, it's not here today. It's sitting about an hour and a half south every freaking time. But, uh, but anyway, I digress. Those will be using some scheduled ADTs that are designed for some really high pressures. And uh, so that's what we're gonna use on those going into the rams. But right now, what we need to concentrate on and trying to kind of think in this out as I go guys so bear with me a little bit so I want to come want to come out of here with my suction line so that's a three-quarter inch nipple to match up with the three-quarter inch these are just thread protectors so they're straight thread that means we have to tape and dope the shit out of them to make sure they don't leak because they're not tapered this is a tapered thread pipe fit thread but this goes from a three-quarter into a three-quarter to one inch reducing elbow to our one inch brass barb fitting and then it's going to be a vinyl hose of some kind rated for petroleum and all that into the suction side of our pump out of the pump it's a half inch port to feed the block the mono block so we will when we get to that point we'll discuss it more so we're going to come out of here with that i'm not worried about a ball valve there because i'm going to be putting a ball valve in the bottom here is a drain port that way if i ever want to drain this thing down to service it it's not a big deal we're going to have our hydraulic inlet or return from the uh from the block up here we're going to come off of here with a filter actually we're yeah we're going to do it from up here because i'm going to make a dip tube for it to go down somewhere in here it is important when you are doing this stuff as a general rule, I do not like to use Teflon tape on anything, any type of gear pump, because if you get that tape in there, it can wreak havoc on the pump itself. In fact, a lot of oil pump manufacturers, if you have a pump go bad, whether it was the tape's fault or not, if you send that pump back for warranty, they will not honor the warranty if there's Teflon tape in the system. So that's something you always want to be aware of. And also, there are specific types of Teflon tape for specific duties. This is a blue monster, the blue Teflon tape. And if you go on their website, you can look up and see all its intended uses. This is intended for hydraulic water, pretty much the Heinz 57 blend of anything you're gonna need with Teflon tape. So this blue monster stuff, according to the factory ratings, you can use it pretty much with anything. The stuff that's in it works very well. Now we use this where I work on a lot of pipe thinning type stuff, the boilers, oil lines. Again, not a big fan of that. So I'm gonna show you guys a couple things to avoid issues of getting this shit all through your piping system. We're also gonna use gas oil thread sealant. This is a soft set thread sealant compound. And this is rated for also for hydraulics, gasoline, water, it's a universal. We're going to use that on the low pressure side. We are not going to be using this stuff on the high pressure side of it. That we have a special thread sealant just for that kind of thing that's rated up to 10,000 PSI. So we'll kind of start at the bottom and work our way up. So if you have to use Teflon tape, a little trick I learned in prison here, leave a couple of threads without any tape on them down where it's going to go into the pipe because what will happen is if you have that tape come up over that thread it actually will break off and it will end up in your system and we do not want that the other thing you need to look for is if you go to take this fitting out you're going to have a lot of this tape is going to end up in the old fitting if you go to put something new in there it's going to force it into the system Maybe not as big a deal on water, 
I mean, I still think it is because, you know, who wants a bunch of Teflon tape and pipe dope all through the drinking water? But I've seen it plenty. Strainers plugged with the stuff, the boiler strainers plugged with it. So again, leave a couple threads back, wrap it nice and tight. I'm sure most of you know how to do this. Try not to get any of the stringers hanging off of it. Again, this is kind of what we're doing here is kind of critical stuff. Now granted, this is just the bottom port, the drain port, but you're going to have a suction line right above it. I see a lot of pipe fitters now like to dope the inside of their fittings. I don't like doing that for the same reasons. It's one of those deals. You do that and you're shoving all that pipe dope into whatever it is you're working on. Now another thing a lot of pipe fitters do, and this is what we do where I work, we always have our uh, ball valves open in the direction of flow. Not that this one's really going to matter much because this one's going to be closed. And we're most likely going to take the valve handle right off of it so somebody doesn't decide to, decide to open it up on us. While we're working, that would really suck. You kick it with your foot or something like that. Again, it's not an emergency valve or anything like that. All it is is uh, just a drain. Let's see if it's going to dump off of there. Yeah, I think we'll just put a plug in there. Well, let's get her back around. That's pretty good. I think we're not going to... I always go another round with it if I need to. This fitting right here is going to go to our uh, hydraulic pipe. Make sure you guys are in frame. It's going to be, like I said, our return coming back to the tank from the block. So this filter assembly does have a bypass in it, so if that filter plugs up, it will bypass at least, you'll lose your power, but it will save the pump. I mean, gear pumps, oil pumps, water pumps, any kind of pump out there does not like cavitation. That's basically the fluid just sits in it and it can't go anywhere, kind of along the same lines as deadhead in the system. That's no good also. So I had absolutely no idea how much of that footage I just friggin' lost, but I know the camera would not let me play any of it back. So I'm going to pull this apart so I can show you whatever the hell we lost. So if we lost all that, I made a dip tube to go down to about here. We're going to keep our hydraulic fluid above that sight glass level. And I think we're going to get a firm coat cap or a well casing cap or something like that to put on this pipe. That way it'll also act as a vent. And it will also make it so I can fill this easier instead of trying to do the uh, what I was planning. I was planning on coming off with an elbow and like a funnel type thing. But you know what? The hell with that. I think I want to be able to fill this thing a little bit quicker than that. I might even weld a couple tabs on here, make a piece of plate, cut it out. So anyway, here's what we have. We made a dip tube in here. We got a three-quarter inch black iron union. Three-quarter inch close nipple on this side of the union. Inside we have another, the other half of the union and another close nipple that goes into the back side of this thread protector. And we got that threaded in there nice and tight. What this is going to do this will allow our hydraulic fluid to go down towards the bottom of the tank, keep it below the level. 
so we don't get a bunch of cavitation and air and stuff like that into the mix. And there's the whole purpose there. And the union, if I ever have to take it apart or anything, it'll be easy enough to do. And I'm going to want to get rid of this galvanized pipe. It's all I had kicking around, but it's in good shape. It's not rusty or anything. It's, not, it's nice and clean inside of it. I have a ton of three-quarter inch black iron. I just don't have a threader here. Otherwise, we would have threaded a piece of that. I'm not a big fan of anything galvanized. Of course, in an oil environment, who knows? It might last forever, but we're going to not uh, place our stock in that. And, but to get it going, to get us running until I get my cheapskate self to grab the piece I need or bring the piece in to get it threaded, that's what we're going to go with. All right, cool. Now, we're going to put the rag over the top of this thing because you guys know my slobbishness by now. I'm likely to kick sawdust or dust another shit into it that we don't want. But, there it is. Our tank is ready for fittings, ready for, well, the fittings are there, it's ready for the hoses. Hoses and a cap, that's where we're at. So anyway, if you guys enjoyed this one, um, I'm not sure what footage I lost, but uh, the viewer I hadn't heard from in a while, I'm a little concerned about him, John Collado, he lives downstate from me, right in kind of the hot spot of everything going on right now, or close to it. Um, Hadn't heard from him in quite a few videos, and he's commented on every single one I've ever put out. Over 500 videos up until a few videos ago, so hopefully John is okay. Anyway, have a good night everybody. I'll catch you on the next one.